What is a lever? A lever, or lever, is a simple machine consisting of a beam or rigid rod pivoted at a fixed hinge or fulcrum. Let's make some levers. In my last Shadow Puppet video, I used four bar linkages to create movement. And it got me thinking a lot about different types of movement and how to calculate it in the four bar linkage. So I wanted to make this follow up video describing it a little more. But first, we have to talk about the lever. There are three types of levers. Each one has a fulcrum or pivot point, a load, and a force. In a first class lever, the fulcrum is in the center, the load is on one end, and the force is applied to the other side. Now by moving closer to the fulcrum, it allows us to gain more movement on the load side at the disadvantage of having to apply more force on this side. In a second class lever, the pivot point is on one side, the load is in the middle, and the force is applied to the other end. Think of a wheelbarrow. The wheel of the wheelbarrow is at one end, the load sits in the barrel in the middle, and you grab the handle by extending your force out far from the fulcrum, it allows you to lift something heavy easier at the disadvantage of having to lift it farther on this side. The third type of lever is similar to the second in that you have a fulcrum on one side, but a load on the end, and you apply force in the middle. This lets you move a load a great distance by moving a shorter amount, but at more force. If we take a lever and we attach a connecting piece to it, this gives us a convenient little arm in which to operate the lever. Right now the other side of the arm is free, so we can move it in any direction. But, if we create an identical lever next to the first one, with the same length between its fulcrum and where it can connect, and we have a connecting rod whose pivot points will be the same length down here. Now we have a four bar linkage. Now, the cardboard itself here, in which the two pivot points are connected, count as the fourth bar, or the first bar, or the second or third, I guess, depending on when you start counting. Because these two are fixed points, and because this distance is the same on both sides, and this length is the same as this, it keeps it as a parallelogram. This line will always be parallel to this one. Of course, you can gain mechanical advantage by changing this distance. Let's do it roughly by half on this side.
Now when we move this lever, this side only moves half as much because it's twice as far away from the pivot point. Alternately, if we move this one, this one moves twice as far. Let's visualize it a little differently. We'll take off our levers. and replace them with these discs. Now, the discs have little chicken beaks on them, so we can tell which direction they're pointing at easily. These work exactly the same as the levers, it just happens to be that they're filled in with a circle otherwise. If you take one point on the lever and move it, it's the same as if it was just a single bar. Let's test that. We'll set the arrows so that they're exactly at 90 degrees up. In fact, let's get a little more precise. We can now easily see that the chicken heads are pointing to various degrees. I did them in 10 degree increments, so it'd be a little easier to see. Let's set it at 90 degrees to our baseline between the pivot points. There. Now that we have our four bar linkage, just as we had it earlier, we can see it's still operating in the same mechanics. If we set it to 90 degrees, it lines up on both sides. If we move one, two, three, 40 degrees on one, we see one, two, three, 40 degrees back on the other side. Let's say we wanted this disc to move 60 degrees total in either direction. So 10, 20, 30 degrees on this side and 10, 20, 30 degrees on this side. But let's say we wanted this one to only move 30 degrees total. So. really big plane just passed overhead. Might be the end of the world. Let's say that this disc on the right only wants to move 30 degrees total. If this is the midpoint, that means it's moving 10, 15 degrees on either side. So, we want it to move based on each other though. So every time this one moves 30 degrees in this direction, this one is going to move 15 degrees in that direction. Let's figure out the math on that. Luckily we're working with some pretty easy numbers. This one's going 60 degrees total, and this one's going 30 degrees total. That's a 2 to 1 ratio. So, what we can do is have the pivot point we've already established here, and we know that the farther away you get out from the fulcrum, the less it's going to move. So we'll establish that as the 30 degree pivot point. Now, what we need to do 
to get this to move to 60, since it's moving twice as much, we need to go twice as close to the fulcrum that we currently are. Let's use some fun Euclidean geometry to figure that out. We could measure with um, a caliper or a ruler, but why not just bisect the line to get our midway point. Great. Now, of course, we can't use the same connecting rod that we did in the first one because that would be based off of this distance, and this distance is going to be greater. So let's make a new one. If you wanted to be more precise, or if you were creating something with that needed greater engineering accuracy. You could do the math on this or figure it out in a CAD program, but we're just doing some basic things for puppetry's sake. So we can be a little sloppy. That second point is going to be about there. So let's try that. Now, if our calculations are correct, when I move this disk point to 15 degrees here, this one should go over to 30, as well as rotating back should line up with 15 degrees here and 30 degrees here. Let's find out. Amazing! I landed up with 20 degrees here, which brought us to 40. So it's still a 2 to 1 ratio. There's 15. <sighs> Let's try doing... using it as a little calculator. So we have 10, 20, 30, 40 degrees on this side, and if it doubles it on this, it should set us to 80. Oh. Now it just locked up on me, and the reason why it did that is because now these three points, one, two, three, are in a line. That sort of makes the mechanics confused, so that's good to know. On the driving one here, you can see it locks up. However, on the smaller end, we could rotate past, and if it gets over the pivot, use that as a rotating arm. But that's a different machine. When laying out these four bar linkages, you always want to set each piece to its midpoint in its journey. When it's on its midpoint, figure out a 90 degree angle relative to its relationship to the other pivot point. So it'll always go straight up to the other pivot point at 90 degrees. Now, let's try something different. In this configuration, 
rotating to the right or clockwise on this one will rotate to the right or clockwise on this one. But what if we wanted it to mesh like gears, where if I rotate clockwise here, it rotates counterclockwise on the other side? Well, the first thing we know that is if this is pushing in this direction, we need this side to push in this direction. But if you have a fixed bar, you can't contract that way. But if we put it on the other side of the pivot point, then they're both going in the same direction relative this way, but transferring the energy in the opposite direction. So let's figure that out. We know that it needs to be 90 degrees in relation to the pivot point, right? So it seems simple enough. that we could just extend the line down on the other side. Make sure these are lined up exactly at 90 degrees pointing up. Now, we're at exactly 90 degrees. The distances are the same. So for every degree that this one moves this way, this one should move a degree that way. Here it is at 20, 30, 40. And on the other, other side, 10, 25 degrees. Ah, that's because you can't just have it across from each other. You need what's actually a tangent line. A tangent line is, uh... What's a tangent line? In geometry, the tangent to a plane curve at a given point is the straight line that just touches the curve at that point. Oh, thanks. We can figure out our tangent lines in math, but since we're working in physical objects, we can also just cheat. And again, we're doing it for puppetry, uh, not super accurate mechanics things, so we can get away with some slop. I've described here a circle equidistant from the pivot point on each sides, like so. What we need to do, after we've set up exactly to 90, is think of these, like I mentioned before, as gears, as they mesh like that. Now, if you remove gears apart, they're not going to mesh with anything. But if you have a pulley belt on them, they will. Also, you can have a pulley belt which runs in a serpentine, or rather, figure eight pattern, like so. When a belt runs with a twist in the middle there, it gives more contact with the pulley surface. It also describes a tangent line. So, if this is the curve that we're trying to match, then what we can do is simply line up a straight edge that just touches both circles.
like so. It's just resting on the circle. Now, if you use that as your reference point and go exactly 90 degrees, or just eyeball exactly where it touches the line, you'll get two new points. Now, let's remove our safety tape. And, if we did our math correctly, this should move the exact same number of degrees. 30, 30. 40, 50, 60. Now, you'll notice that it doesn't quite make it exact on the other side. Now why is that? That's because the farther we go across here, the further away from the original tangent line we get, and we start losing that geometry. So, this is good if you're rotating something small distances, or small amounts of degrees, because it will stay fairly true. But the further away you get, the more it distorts. Thanks for watching. This concludes the Alex Olmstead video on four bar linkages. If you enjoyed this content, please subscribe and like. Also, please consider supporting us on Patreon.